So the chief oral interview, um, this is a big deal, right? And so it, when you, and I can remember getting those letters and, and you're like, holy cow. All right. And, and there's no doubt that, um, you, you do get that sense of, um, that you're, you're in the door definitely. Right. And at, and at this point, and I, and I will definitely hear Jeff's, um, you know, vast experience on this, but, uh, this is really where um, the the chief officers of, of the agency want to get to know you. This is really where they're they on a personal level, not so much what are your certificates anymore. You've already gone through that hurdle. You've already gone through that initial screening. So um, this is where personal questions and just again getting a a real uh, feel um, for that uh, for that candidate really comes out because again now now we're looking at somebody that is going to be with us hopefully for the next 30 years of their career right and you know for from a a chief officer's point of view you're thinking about is this person going to be a good fit is this person going to get through the fire academy is this person going to get through probation Uh, because again the implications of um, being unsuccessful in any of those categories lead to uh, financial issues um, you know uh, ongoing holes in the department um, a lot of different uh, problems that occur from not picking the right person. So this this point of the uh, hiring process is incredibly important, and I'll let um, Jeff speak to this. Well, thank you for that. Uh, I think uh, if you get invited to a chief's oral, you have won the lottery, and it's for you to lose, not to win. So here's my advice to you. Um, number one, you need to know about the organization. Don't insult me by coming in the door and not knowing anything about the place that you want to work. I mean, you will automatically be disqualified for that. And I think I speak for hundreds of fire chiefs when it comes to that issue right there. So you need to know the organization. And my suggestion to you is you need to start at the company officer level. You need to go to a fire station, go up to the captain, introduce yourself, ask them if you can spend some time, get to know the crew. You shouldn't show up empty handed. You got to be bringing in a box of bagels or half a gallon of ice cream or some fruits and healthy things. But the bottom line is you shouldn't probably walk into the fire station empty handed. And then you ought to sit down and talk to the crews. Why do you like to work here? What goes on? How busy are you? You need to know those facts. And one of the things that I would suggest in this day and age is to go on the website and figure out what's going on there. Do they have a standards of cover? A standards of cover is a document that tells about the community, which is very important for you to know, and tells about what the organization does to fit the needs of the community. Some standards of covers go down into the census tract areas where it will actually tell you about uh, the, the people that live there. And census tract data is incredibly uh, helpful. It'll tell you about the social economic status of the community, segments of the community, the fire stations that serve that. Um, It talks about response times. It talks about services. It talks about gaps. It talks about weaknesses. You should be really prepared to be able to do that. You also ought to look and see if there's a strategic plan or a master plan in there that talks about the fire department, where it is and where it's going. Uh, I should go to the Chamber of Commerce and learn uh, on their website about the community as a whole because we're not hiring you necessarily to work. We are hiring you to work for the fire department, but we're, we don't want you just to be myopic about just the fire agency. We want you to, to serve the community as a whole. So you need to know about that community. So my number one advice is know about the department. When you walk through the door, it is very helpful to say, yes, I've been to station 15 and I met with captain Jones and I sat down with his crew and he shared with me. And I'm really excited about that opportunity because I really want to be a firefighter in this agency. That's one thing I would suggest to you. Second, if you've applied to a lot of places and you admit that, which you could be asked, you have to have a reason why you want to come to City X or Fire District Y or County Fire Department Z. There, there needs to be a reason why for that. Otherwise, you're just job shopping. And you know, frankly, one of the most frustrating things is that uh, you go to work for an agency, uh, you, they hire you, they train you, and two to three years later, you leave and go someplace else. You know, we have invested a huge amount of money in the first three to five years of, of a candidate, um, hoping that they'll be a lifelong employee for you. So 
If we have people that are coming and going and moving around, jumping around, you know, oftentimes we can't stop that. Uh, but the reality is we try, want to try and avoid that if at all costs. So I, I think you ought to be thinking about that. Um, oftentimes during that chief's interview, uh, the panel will ask you, do you have any questions for us? And I think that that's a great opportunity for you to learn a little bit more. You know, chief, what's your philosophy on X, Y, or Z or or as a management team, what do you guys think about this? I, th I think that shows some insight. Uh, it should be a two-way conversation, not a one-way conversation. Although, uh, let's face it, uh, when we hire an entry-level person, we don't want you thinking that you're gonna come in and run the place, because you know that might be many years away before that really occurs. Although, I I'd have to tell you um, that when I look at some of the people that we've hired, I, thought, I think to myself, Will they be our next captains? Will they next be our chief officers? Will there be the future fire chief that we're hiring today? Which is all a possibility because generally most agencies um, promote from within and that's how we do things. So I, th I think you need to be really, really well prepared for that. Uh, I think you need to have thoughtful questions. Um, I think you need to be very sincere and also uh, you need to be cautious in what you say because oftentimes if I hear something or, or, or there's something that doesn't make sense to me and I choose to go ahead in the hiring process, I'll have the background investigators look at that or I'll have our psychological screeners look at that sort of stuff. So uh, I, again, you need to be yourself. Uh, you need to be upfront and honest. Uh, again, be formal. Um, and know something about the organization. Uh, that'll be the immediate disqualifier for me. If you come in and go, why do you want to work for city X, Y, or Z? And you say, I don't know, I want to be a firefighter. You, you've shown no interest in something that I take great pride in, and, and you'll be automatically disqualified, at least if I was on that hiring panel. Eddie, your thoughts? I agree, um, agree with your points. And, uh, and I've, I've witnessed that, by the way, you know, that, um, um, candidates that uh, that don't even and especially in this day and age of uh, um, obviously the internet and uh, and Google you can you know my expectation is is that any candidate that's coming into a firehouse knows anything that you could pull off the website right and um, that that would, that's the expectation I would have for myself if I was going to go learn about Jeff's department or anybody, you know, not necessarily to work there, but just because I even wanted to understand his department a little bit more, um, understand the um, the structure, the organizational structure, um, understand what they do there. So yeah, that's that's very insulting. Uh, it's a waste of everyone's time. So make sure at the very least that you do your own uh, homework and research. Also remember um, first impressions, Jeff touched on a little bit, but when you do um, visit fire stations, make sure that you call the captain, make sure it's business hours, you know, so between eight and five, right? You wanna avoid lunchtime and you wanna avoid after 5 p.m. because that's generally, that's the cruise time. You know, they, they live there, um, they are there for 24, 48, or even 72 hours or more. Uh, so you wanna be cognizant of that. Also dress professionally. Um, don't show up, you know, in shorts and flip flops, um, because that's not going to go over well. So, um, and there's, there's these little things and we're trying to help you to not fall into some of these traps because <laughs> unfortunately there's plenty of examples of the people that do. So, uh, we're trying to kind of save you from that.